Pro podcast. Go pro. Pro procast and propane. Procrastination. Jeez, even saying the word correctly takes so much effort. Procrastination is a new term used whenever you unknowingly get distracted by something irrelevant while you're doing an important task. For example, little Tommy was doing his homework like a normal little boy should, without a care in the world. <laughs> Yay! I love you, my homework. Wait, what is that? <laughs> You go, Tommy. Wait, 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 Tommy, no, don't do it! You did so well! What is this? What was this button do? Oh, oh Facebook! <laughs> Tommy, he was too young! As a creator of any description, we are constantly bombarded with new ideas, new concepts like fill our mind. We all get this creative surge of... <gasps> I've got this crazy idea. And then whenever we go to Google or YouTube to get inspiration for it, the first three or four searches are usually slightly related to your idea, but then you become so engrossed, it becomes a problem. For example, with myself, I could be looking up how to draw anatomy. And then I could be watching some fists and then some knees. And then 20 minutes later, I could be dwelling into a dubstep remix of the Jurassic Park theme song with the famous vine quote, What are those? Cute. So this can be quite negative as the effects of getting distracted like this can often result in a number of ways in which it can ruin your life in some way, shape or fashion. The first point is you'll lose time. I love Breaking Bad. It was such a great show and I would love to watch it again. But I know that the time I invested in watching the show the first time, I could have been doing something totally productive. Sure, you can talk about how Heisenberg did this or how Scatherweight is a total bad, better person, but you're losing out on time you could have spent elsewhere. Which leads to my second point, you'll lose out on opportunities that can affect your career and your social life. There can be a few times where people I know or online have come to me requesting that I do a specific project, although it sounds interesting to me and it's experience which could benefit me. Goofing off and playing Fifty Shades of Super Mario Brothers sounds like a better idea. I do complete a lot of my commissions, but if I don't work on it straight away or within a set deadline that I give them myself, then you'll most likely see it in March whenever I remember about it. Because hey, Fifty Shades of Super Mario Brothers ain't gonna play itself. Lastly, which is the most important point, is that this can affect your health and most likely lower your self-esteem. You'll procrastinate so much with something that it will most likely start to stress you out and make you more anxious because you're too far off the beaten path. And then you start criticizing yourself and lose focus. And is it any wonder? I'm 21 years old. I've been posting my work online since I was 13. Whenever I go on DeviantArt or Tumblr just to have a browse, I come across drawings of flawless proportions done by 13 year olds. Whenever I was 13, I could just about draw a Pikachu. These 13 year olds can draw the flippin' sick theme chapel on Mars smoking a cigar. We all have different skill levels and some people are just gifted that way, but for people who are trying and working on their craft, it's crippling and discouraging to be under someone's shadow. But hey, I'm not saying people who can draw the sick theme chapel on Mars smoking a cigar shouldn't do it, because their talent is what we need, and we need that to aspire to. At the minute, I'm talking all dim and gloom about procrastination. But necessarily, it's not always a bad thing. But you just say that it has all these negative effects and makes people lose focus and... and uh, shh. Yeah, because for a little experiment, I went 24 hours without procrastination. 24 hours? That's lame. Nope, this section of the video is counterproductive and goes against everything that you... You didn't see that. He, uh, he fell. The experiment, like I said, consisted of me not procrastinating for 24 hours. So I turned off my phone, the internet, the TV, and my game consoles. I could only use my laptop in a productive manner, which was to begin animating a cartoon. This one! So from this day, I try to get at least five hours worked on. It sounds simple, and actually, yeah, it was. I'll give you a little summary if I made it win. So all in all, out of that day, I did 7 and 11 minutes of solid work. Was it easy? Sure it was, because I was trying to stay in the constant focused mind frame and all I had was my work and my music to get me through the day. However, during my downtime, I didn't really know what I could do with myself in that sense. Like I couldn't check on Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or YouTube, I couldn't play any of my games and I couldn't watch Netflix. 
nothing. So, after my little experiment, I conclude that by cutting yourself off from all your usual distractions, you can still get your work done if you stick with an empire free. But, by having an outlet for your downtime, giving yourself a set time limit for this downtime is also good. So since then, I've also come up with some tips of my own to help deal with procrastination. Number one, write a list. Often when it comes to deadlines, your mind can be scattered all over the show. So what I often do is I write myself a list of exactly what needs to be done. So whenever you knock things off the list, it's oh so satisfying. Number two, background noise. Music helps people relax and stay in tune with their workflow. It's been proven that it works for surgeons as they perform because for a high stress job like cutting open a human and touching all over their organs, you need something to help put you in some sort of concentration zone. Number three, reward yourself. Give yourself a break. You work hard, like nine to five maybe? If you feel like you work hard and you're satisfied for what you did, reward yourself, damn it. Slam back a cold one, order pizza, play that game, watch those shows, trim your toenails, take a bath, scrub your feet. And that's just for all the short victories. But give yourself something to look forward to so when you finish your workload, it feels like an actual reward that you deserve. Number four, role models. I recommend having good role models that you can look up to. Mine are the Game Grumps. Aaron Hansen, Dan Avedon, and Ross O'Donovan. They all inspire me in a multitude of different ways. Sure, a majority of their videos consist of them talking about butts and wieners, but whenever people come up to them and ask them, Hey, how do you get good at animating or singing or editing and blah 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 blah? And they give the same answer each time. Just do it and be happy about it. Also, don't do it if you want to be famous or make money, otherwise you'll sink. Do it for yourself. And in conclusion, it really comes down to the person and their willpower. If you can motivate yourself to work hard and reward yourself, do so. It's going to be an endless battle, but you can overcome it, okay? I know you can, because hey, you look good today. Thanks for watching! And now that this is over, I believe Fifty Shades of Super Mario Brothers is called my name, if you know what I mean.